the element of gender interactions. Boys and girls talking, communicating, befriending one another on social media. This is the first point we'd like to speak about. Can boys and friends, the boys and girls, just be friends? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةٍ أَتَصْبِرُونَ We have made you a fitna for one another, Allah said. Will you be patient? Undoubtedly, communication did exist between the men and the women from the companions of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, No one can challenge that. They did speak. But what type of speak? What type of speech? It was a speech that was uh, shadowed with umbrellas of decency, and adab, and mannerisms, and respect. And take note of this one, necessity. That was their communication with one another. Adab, mannerisms, respect, decency, and necessity. That's how they spoke. And there was this famous study that happened at the University of Wisconsin, Wisconsin Eau Claire, where they took 44 college age uh, students. Some of them were uh, single, others were uh, in a relationship, and they, and they paired them together, and they studied them over a period of about a year. And these people were friends before, up to two years to 11 years of a friendship. Boys and girls, they put them together, and then they assessed they gave them an interview afterwards. And they found men almost always had an attraction towards the girl, but the girl didn't always have an attraction towards the boy. They found when they were interviewing them that the men consistently overestimated the relationship, thinking that something was going on. There's interest. And the women consistently underestimated the relationship, saying there was nothing going on, we're just friends. And now, subhanAllah, with the whole Me Too movement, it, it's showing Islam as being morally superior yet again. It was so wise when it said to you, be careful, be careful how you speak to the opposite gender and how you interact and with social media. This opportunity has just mushroomed, it's just exploded. Back in the days you wanted to talk with the girl you like, it was just, I guess, a, a piece of paper. You write a message in it, you make it into a paper airplane and you launch it and you hope it'll get into the window of her room, not into the lap of her father, that is. Yeah, and some of the stories that our elders shared with us prior to them practicing are hilarious. Now you don't need no paper aeroplane. You don't need a, a ladder to climb into someone's room. You just need an 11 digit number, right? Or you need the social media profile name. You're into the bedroom of that person. You're telling me that's not a test. It's a serious problem, brothers and sisters. So this is the first point I want you to think about and put yourself under the litmus test. If you're failing this one, maybe you need to walk away and look, subhanAllah, salah. What we did now is proof. Look at the arrangement of salah. Look at the formation of Salah. How was Salah at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu where women and men, they prayed in the same room, but how? Well, look, Salah, the purest of all actions, carried out by the companions, the purest of all people, in Masjid al-Nabawi, one of the purest of all places on earth. But look at the separation, because Islam is realistic, it's pragmatic, it don't throw you under the bus like that. Imam is a man, never a woman. There's bowing, there's prostration, there's compromising positions, there's also an element of leadership. There is an Imam. And then you have men who pray at the front. Where do women pray? Women, they pray at the back. Tayyip, what are the greatest rows for men in terms of reward? The, the front rows. What are the most rewarding rows for our sisters? The rows that are furthest away from the men, the back rows. Then the Prophet ﷺ would say to the companions when they finish their salah, you don't turn around till your sisters, they get up and leave first. And there was a door for them called Babu Nisa, the door of the women, and they would leave by themselves uninterrupted in a dignified manner, not having to push and shove with men. He would say, you stay there, don't turn around until they leave. This is in salah, in full hijab, faces covered. And then the men would get up and they would leave. So you're telling me that this is the arrangement in salah, but all of a sudden on social media, what's going on sis, DM me. And that's not going to affect you, this is okay? This is a, if that was the case, our religion would be bipolar, it'd be schizophrenic. That it tells you that you do your salah like this, but then outside of salah, when there's no holiness involved, everything is a free-for-all, this is number one. What was number one, Ya Jahangir? Gender, interactions. Test yourself on that, be honest. 